Okay, so I wanted to show you um, an example of this angle of insulation. So if we imagine that this is the Earth, and I don't really have, where's my dinosaur? Here's my little dino, my little dinosaur. Or he's sitting on the, the plains back in the late Triassic, and the sun is going to rise. And this is going to be our sun. And I want to show you an example of why it is that the higher the angle of insulation, the more intense or the hotter it is. And the, the, this is the best way to show it. This is my sun. Sorry to blind you, um, if I blinded you. And this is going to be the Earth. And what happens throughout the day, sun's below the horizon, it rises up, gets to 90 degrees, anywhere between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. Let's say we're at the equator. It gets to 90 degrees, and then it sets. Right? Now, that, that angle, and I'll do this so I don't, I don't blind you, the angle is the angle from the horizon here up to where the sun is. So when we're at sunrise or sunset, the angle is really low between the horizon and where the sun is. When we get to noon, the sun is at 90 degrees. You can see this is a 90 degree angle. And then as the sunset, it gets back to that lower angle. Now, if we look at this, and I'll try, it's, it's a little hard with the glare, but the area that is being illuminated or lit up by this, by this sun is just right here. And you can imagine, and I can show you this if, if you want um, at some point in lab, but basically this is the only area that's lit up by the sun. When it's 90 degrees, all the light that's coming from the sun is concentrated in one area. As I get lower in the sky, or on either sunrise or sunset, that sunlight is spread out over a much wider area. So the area that is lit up is this whole lab table, the whole top of this lab table. So what was once concentrated in this area is now spread out over a wider area. And so any one particular spot on the lab table is going to get less energy if, it's lit, if we have a low angle because it's spread out over a wider area. So if it were at 90 degrees, most of the energy is concentrated in one area. It's focused in one spot. And that same amount of energy, I didn't turn the light bulb up or, or turn the light bulb down, that same energy is spread out over a wider area. So you just have less energy to go around. So the temperature in when the sun is low in the sky is going to be lower. So we have low angles of insulation for three reasons, right? One is time of day, morning, noon, night. It gets lower, higher at noon, lower again at, at, at sunset. The angle depends on where you are on the Earth, right? If I look here, the, the sun is hitting directly at the equator here, but it's at a lower angle up at the North Pole and at the South Pole. And the other is the season. If we're like this, if this is the sun and this is the Earth, you can see that the top of the Earth is tilted away from the sun. That means that we're getting less lower angle of sunlight than someplace down here. And that means that we're going to get cooler temperatures. So it's winter. If when the Earth and the Sun are in a different position, when the Earth is, or as the Earth goes around the Sun, it gets over here, the angle's still the same, tilted the same direction, but now we're tilted towards the Sun, and so we get a higher angle of insulation, which means we get warmer temperatures and we get summer. So that's, that's a, a, just sort of a, a way for you to maybe visualize it a little bit. Um, I hope that you were able to, to visualize it a little bit. Now, my daughter, She's into these crazy knock knock jokes. She's, every night we're doing knock knock jokes at home. So I've got one for you. Knock knock. Who's there? Who? Boo who? Don't cry. It's earth science. You gotta like it, right? Yay, Mr. Gowler. You're so funny. Okay. Bye.